So our next talk is by Daniel uh, uh, Bichler from United States, and it's about differences in oral and anal HPV natural history among HIV-infected individuals. Thank you. Thanks. I have uh, no disclosures, and I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak today. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about a study that is exploring the natural history of anal and oral HPV infection among HIV-infected individuals in Baltimore, Maryland. So uh, uh, HIV-infected individuals are at elevated risk for uh, HPV-associated cancers, such as anal cancer and oral pharyngeal cancer. However, the uh, U.S.-based uh, registry studies suggest that the standardized incidence ratios comparing HIV-positive individuals to the general population differs between um, HPV-associated cancers. For example, um, anal cancer, the uh, SIR comparing uh, HIV-positive general population is over 25 times higher in HIV-positives, while for or pharyngeal cancer, the initial data suggests that it, uh, it's only about two to six times higher. In terms of H anal and oral HPV infection, uh, most of the studies have been cross-sectional in nature, and they suggest that uh, the prevalence of anal HPV infection is considerably higher than oral HPV infection, at least among uh, HIV-infected individuals. And as was mentioned earlier, the natural history, especially of oral HPV infection, has been largely unexplored. So we're interested in exploring this natural history and looking at um, whether we can explain these prevalence differences and the cancer differences we're seeing. And we think it could be explained either by a increased anal HPV incidence compared to oral HPV incidence, or an increased anal HPV persistence compared to oral HPV persistence. So our study included a, about a little over 400 HIV-infected adults from Baltimore, Maryland, and they were recruited from a Johns Hopkins uh, Hospital HIV care clinic and we enrolled them through a convenience sample. And um, participants were filed for up to two and a half years with semi-annual semi collection. And a little under half of participants contributed at least four more visits in this study. So we collected oral rinse and gargle samples as well as anal swabs semi-annually. And uh, we isolated the DNA from these samples and then tested them for 37 different HPV types using uh, standard PGMY 9 and 11 primers and reverse line blot hybridization. So for our outcomes, we um, analyzed them on the type-specific infection level. So infections were either described as prevalent if they were positive at baseline or incident if they were first detected thereafter. Um, we're also interested in HPV persistence for this study, so we first needed to define its inverse HPV clearance, and we had two definitions for HPV clearance in this study. Um, the first being, which is a, a more standard definition of a uh, HPV infection cleared at its first negative visit, but we also considered a more stringent definition for HPV clearance where we required at least two consecutive negative visits um, for an HPV infection to clear. So for our analyses, we considered um, standard regression models, including uh, Cox proportional hazard models, and utilized generalizing estimating equations to adjust for the correlation between multiple infections within a single individual. Okay, so in this study, we saw a mix of um, men who have sex with men, heterosexual men, and females who were almost all heterosexual. This was a middle-aged, uh, primarily African-American cohort, and they had a high level of uh, hard drug use. About three-quarters reported ever performing oral sex in their lifetime, while uh, under half reported ever performing uh, anal sex, or, or having had re receptive anal sex in their lifetime. This was also was a uh, immunosuppressed population with low nadir and current CD4 um, cell count. And about thir uh, two-thirds of the population reported being on HIV therapy, ever being on HIV therapy at baseline. Okay, so what we see at, at baseline, and this is similar to other cross-sectional studies, is that the um, prevalence of anal HPV infection is considerably higher than oral HPV infection. 
And this is true among the 37 HPV types that we test, among the uh, oncogenic types, the 14 oncogenic types that we tested for, and among HPV 16. So it was pretty much across the board, much higher uh, anal HPV prevalence. And at baseline, we saw about 4.6 was the mean number of anal HPV types detected per person, while the mean number of oral HPV types was 0.5. And I also want to point out that while on a relative scale the oral HPV prevalence is lower than anal HPV prevalence in our study, it's still uh, you know, a relatively high prevalence, especially compared to the general population. We see it, uh, a prevalence of about 28%, and that compares about four times higher to what's seen in the U.S. general population. Okay, so next we explored whether these prevalence differences could be explained by a difference in um, incidence. And indeed, we did see a considerably higher anal HPV incidence compared to oral HPV incidence, uh, about five times higher among uh, any HPV. And this was considerably true among the uh, women and the men who have sex with men in our study. Uh, the heterosexual men had a higher anal HPV incidence, but notice there that the oral HPV incidence um, is the highest on the heterosexual men compared to the MSM and uh, women. We also saw that the um, incidence comparing anal and oral is, is similar among the oncogenic types, the non-oncogenic types, the four uh, HPV vaccine types, and HPV-16. So again, across the board, we're seeing higher anal HPV incidence than uh, oral HPV incidence in the study. Okay. So next we explored um, HPV persistence. And we, when we first started analyzing this data, we uh, noticed that there were multiple different patterns of infection. Um, there were infections in black here that were persistently detected across our study. There were also infections that were intermittently detected across our study. So they were um, flickering in and out of detection throughout um, our study. And there was also cleared infections. So there was infections that were positive and then had at least two consecutive negative visits and did not um, subsequently uh, become re-detected. Uh, okay, so, so given those patterns, as I mentioned in the methods, we considered two definitions for HPV clearance. And so this is the, uh, the less strict definition, the single negative test for HPV clearance. And what we see here is that um, anal HPV persistence is modestly higher than oral HPV persistence, about 1.5 times higher. And what we see here is that at about 12 months, about 60% of anal HPV um, infections are um, still persisting, while only about 36% of oral HPV infections are um, persisting. And this is only among um, the prevalent infections at, at baseline. Okay, so here's a Kaplan-Meier curve showing this relationship. Um, we're seeing here across our whole study that in pink here, the anal HPV persistence is higher um, across our, for, for the two-year study uh, over the oral HPV persistence here in blue. And so we see at about two years, um, a about a little under half of the anal HPV infections are persisting, while only a quarter of the oral HPV infections are persisting in this uh, immunosuppressed population. Okay, so how about the, the instantly detected infections that we found? How about their persistence? So what we saw among these infections is again that um, anal HPV infection our persistence is higher than oral HPV persistence. And this was true across our six, 12, and 18 month uh, definition. And we saw at, at 12 months, only about 28% of anal HPV infections were persistently detected, while 15% of oral HPV infections were persistently detected. Okay, and again, here on the left is the Kaplan-Meier curve, and we see that that the majority of these infections, these incident infections are persisting when you're using this one negative definition for clearance. And that in pink, the anal HPV persistence is modestly higher than um, oral HPV persistence. But as I mentioned, um, we considered another definition requiring um, two consecutive negative visits to deal with this intermittent um, infection issue. 
And we see here that, um, again, that only about a half of, we, we detect infections at uh, the end of our study were still about 50% of the infections were persistently detected um, when using this less um, stringent definition for um, cl clearance. But again, the, um, the persistence of anal HPV was higher than oral HPV when using this um, definition, both among the incident infections here and among the prevalent infections. Okay, so finally we considered uh, multivariate modeling using uh, of HPV persistence, looking at uh, modeling using Cox proportional hazard models with GEE, adjusting for potential confounders. And we found that the hazard of persistence um, was four times higher in prevalent infections compared to incident infections in our study. And in addition, the hazard of HPV persistence is 1.5 times higher comparing um, anal HPV infections to oral HPV infections. Okay, to, to summarize, we see a higher incidence and persistence of anal HPV infection compared to oral HPV infection in this study. And we think this can explain the results from uh, cross-sectional studies and the differences in uh, prevalence. And I think it also can contribute to why there's a higher um, anal, H anal cancer burden compared to oral um, pharyngeal cancer in HIV-infected individuals. In addition, I want to point out that we saw a high level of intermittent uh, infections in this HIV positive um, population. So anal and oral, um, similar, and this has been seen in the cervical HPV literature as well, and we think that like cervical HPV, it could be that anal and oral HPV infection may be commonly re-expressed, even among individuals who report recently being sexually abstinent. Okay, I'd like to thank the participants, my collaborators, and funding sources. Thank you. Time for a quick question. Please. Did you see any relationship between immune status and CD4 count? Yes. So we did some risk factor modeling in of, of baseline prevalent infection, and we did see that uh, reduced CD4 cell count um, was associated with prevalent infection. However, with um, actually persistent infection, surprisingly, we didn't see uh, an association. But I want to point out that we only had uh, risk factor information at, at baseline for this study, so we didn't have time updated um, covariates, so I think our inference is, is limited. So I think we hypothesized still that a reduced CD4, similar to cervical HPV, would um, increase the persistence, but um, we didn't see it in the study. Thank you very much. Thank you. Move on.